by many, many different routes, they accept that the Gael, the Gaelic people, the Gaelic language came, but all they will say is that it came directly from the continent. They won't say from where, which is as good as, as they'll go to, it, to admitting that it came by sea from the south, from Spain. And again, it's like going to America from Cork. Of course, that's where all the ships left to. So everybody in America thinks their grandmother came from Cork. Well, yes, she did. She left from Cork. <laughs> so that would be true of Spain as well. It was the jumping off point. So I hope, I, I hope that answers uh, part of your question. But I, I'm sorry I can't get the actual little section here, which I love, in O'Reilly, um, where it goes back to um, the, uh, the name Nell or Neil, uh, and why um, uh, but all of these words are, are very telling like for instance uh, con and the, the, the name the words the colas was they drop the n um, a recurring name is, is con which comes from the Irish word meaning can which is a head so can, con, you know, so you see it all the time so therefore the word con and you know a name like con, so we like connacht connacht is you know a con so the word the name con would have been very common uh, in the and um, uh, Neil is very similar to that the the word of course um, meal as we know you know the, was simply um, that he was a warrior because meal that's where the word military comes from so meal was a very ancient word which had to do with um, a, 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 a warrior and the and, uh, ability to do battle. So actually, when you look, and when you're not just a total Anglophile, which is just very Anglo-centric, where everything has to be, you know, you, know, it's, it's, you, live, you miss a tremendous amount. So thank goodness now even British scholars are looking at... Um, at um, the um, the science of words, but um, uh, I can't remember. I'm trying to remember um, what was the derivation of the word Neil. Now there was a time ah, Neil, maybe it's cried to the ends of the Gael. It was kind of, um, it was Neil, N E L, actually was the ancient um, um, pre uh, pre pre uh, pre Neil of the Nine Hostages name it predated him you see a lot of people thought that it had to do with Nui because of the Nine you know uh, no, no, but then they discovered that no um this guy, he says, oh yeah, the name Neil appears to have originated with Neil Nugel. Well, the name, yeah. The name is unknown, a pedigree previous to his name, and is devoted with the logic of the okay. I think was, this is somebody else writing. I think it's extremely probable that his real name was not Neil, but Nell, in the L. Um, the letter identical with the word meaning cloud. That's what I was looking for. I knew there was something in there. Okay, cloud occurs as a mythical name in the pedigree of the Aaron. We also hear of Nell, son of Cormac Gil Gilia, ancestor of the lineage of Mead, and so on. So we find Neil, N-E with a long E, you know, uh, father on the N-E with a long father, which would be equivalent to N-E-E-L in English. Neil, father, son of the Godilic Gloss, among the ancestor of Meal. So actually, um, so the word the word Neil, N E L, appears to have been long remembered for the author of um, and so on. Connects the two names. So that's what I was looking for. And the change to uh, fr from Neil to Nile, maybe ex ex um, sorry, described the influence of the Gil in his uh, constant epithet Ni Gila. Now we know that Gil means servant. Or um, it's very common again in the uh, Gil um, uh, or um, hostage, kind of the same thing. 
subjected, subjected person. Uh, so, you know, we talked about this before, um, Gilaforic, Mac Gilaforic, Gilaforic was the servant of, um, of, pa of Patrick, who would have been a, 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 a saintly person. Um, now, so, uh, so Connell, Chir Connell, uh, so it came from the kid's name uh, Connell, which would have been again a popular name uh, with, to do with the head. It came from head, uh, head man. But I gotta tell you a little bit before we break, because it looks like we're going to break here real soon. It would be incredibly unfair of me not to tell you. So if I may, I want to tell you about the star of the show, uh, Red Hugh O'Donnell. Um, <clears throat> now Red Hugh was not the Earl that fled in 16. Uh, it was his son. Um, but Red Hugh, every Irish child knows about Red, the Red Hugh O'Donnell having been captured by John, Sir John Perrault and imprisoned in Dublin Castle and escaping in the depth of winter along with uh, Henry and Art, two sons of none other than Shane O'Neill. Um, and uh, Art hurt his foot jumping out of the, over the wall and had to be dragged uh, by, um, uh, what's the name, uh, McShane, not McShane, uh, but uh, O'Hagan, I'm sure it is, yeah, O'Hagan. So it's so much involved here. If you remember from uh, the great O'Neill, I told you about the O'Hagans, he, he was fostered into the O'Hagan family. Now here you have these three boys, they were only 15, 16 years old, had been captured in Las Willy and brought down us, um, and escaped. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the, um, uh, this, is, this is probably better than, um, the English deputy Sir John Perrault. Sir John Perrault, this fat guy, universally accepted to have been the son of Henry VIII. And he uh, was the uh, English, very colorful character. He fought the, the Desmond Wars, a, a very interesting guy. Very, and apparently, you know, it was the spitting image of, uh, of Henry. Um, in order to check the rising power of the O'Donnells and their alliance with the uh, Hebridean Scots, plotted to kidnap the O'Donnell heir. A ship with a cargo of Spanish wine came into Los Willy, and the 17-year-old Red Hugh and two companions were invited on board. The hatches were closed and the ship sailed for Dublin, where they were incarcerated in the dreaded castle. It was not until three years later, on the eve of the Epiphany, January 1582, that Red Hugh and, and the two young sons of Shane O'Neill, Henry and Art, naturally known as Henry McShane and Art McShane, you know, that's what they escaped for the second time on a three-day trek across the snow-covered snow Wicklow Mountains to Glyn Malure. Glyn Malure. They suffered intense, hard, intense hardship and Henry O'Neill was separated from the others. Art O'Neill died of exposure, but Red Hugh, helped by the O'Burns and the O'Tools of Wicklow, eventually reached his, father castle, his father's castle at Ballyshannon, which is just north of Sligo in Donegal. Uh, <coughs> Hugh had to, the, had to suffer the loss of his two big toes, which had been frostbitten. His father handed the chieftain over to Hugh, and in, in 1598, he joined with Hugh O'Neill in the decisive battle of the Yellow Ford. So, so much comes together there. Now, this was the, this was the red Hugh O'Donnell that went down and fought um, at, along with Hugh O'Neill at um, uh, Kinsale and went to Spain and died the following year at the age of 31 probably poisoned, at least it's widely believed to be poisoned, but we're not sure, at the hands of a Galway man, who of course was uh, essentially uh, an English, by James Blake of Galway. <laughs> That's the belief. Um, but the story of the abduction and the escape of those three friends, but there's so much contained in there. Uh, it shows that the ancient rivalry between the, um, on the, the uh, O'Neills and the O'Donnells was obviously 
not operating at that time, so that Shane's two sons were over visiting with their cousins, the O'Donnells. And if you remember from when we talked about O'Neill and uh, the, how Shane had, Shane really had, was the one who subjected, or subdued rather, the O'Donnells. And he did it very dramatically. He, he imprisoned, he didn't kill Manus O'Donnell and, and um, had his way with his wife. <laughs> now there are those who say that she preferred Shane to, to um, she didn't make a great deal of effort to escape and had sons and so on. But um, it seems that wouldn't have been terribly unusual for Shane. Uh, but um, I guess because it, he, she was the wife of such a great chieftain and for uh, him to be doing it so openly and so on. So there's a, there's a, a lot of wonderful stories. Calva, uh, <coughs> O'Neill, uh, 